Good morning. Good morning. As we have heard, it is a new year, a time for resolutions, a time to look back on the last year, to see how things went, to see if we can make corrections for the new year, to, you know, make those resolutions that we never keep, um, make promises that probably will last for maybe the first month. But what I want you to think about is God's promises to you. And that when God promises something, you can rest assured that they will come to pass. For God never forgets, nor does He change His mind. And God has promised through Scripture many things that will be new. And that's what I want to look at this morning. If you still have it, let's look back at Revelation 21, verse 5. Revelation 21, verse 5. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things what? Amen. Are you tired of the way things are now? Are you tired of this world? Do you have hope that there's something better than this? Sometimes this isn't so bad. You know what I mean? Sometimes it can be pretty good. But do you long for something better? I long for something better. Something that's permanent that will last. A peace. Because even when things are good here, there's still always that <laughs> nagging feeling in the back that it won't last. Because one thing you can count on here is that things will change. If they're going good, that will change. If they're going bad, that will change also. But God promises you that there will come a day when He will make all things new. The book of Revelation, the prophet Isaiah, tells us that God, in the future, will make a new heaven and a new earth. And He tells us the old things will pass away and all things will become new. Have you ever allowed your mind to just think of what that's going to be like? To be able to be in His presence and not have anything separating you from your Savior. There will be no more sin, no more death, no more adversary. There will just be righteousness, holiness, and perfection. And do you know what the best thing is? You will be that righteousness. You will be that holiness. And you will be that perfection. Think of what your life is like now. Can you imagine really being holy? To stand before a holy God and be perfect in His presence. You understand now where we get our holiness and our righteousness and our perfection from now Amen. in this life? Where do we get that from? Jesus. We get it from Jesus. So that when God looks at us, who does He see? But when He makes all things new, He will look at you, and you will be perfect and righteous and holy. And there will no longer be this battle going on inside of you between the new nature and the old nature. Amen. He who sits on the throne says, Behold, I make all things new. And He said to me, Write, for these words are what? True and faithful. What words are true and faithful? That He will make all things new. We have so many years to live on this planet. And if we live a hundred years, that's a long time for us, right? How long did Methuselah live? Now you realize that there was one of his predecessors that lived to like 967. So it wasn't like he lived a great time farther than his predecessors. But he lived 967 years. Is that a long time? Yes. Think about it. If you live for 100 years, and he lived 867 years longer than you, that's a long time, right? If you were to go back 967 years into the past, 
and see what the world was like then, uh, what the living standard was, would it be different than where we're at today? Okay, this was their lifetimes, and believe me, if the average lifespan was around 800 years, they were still thinking when they came to the end, it wasn't enough. Why is that? Why is 100 years not enough for us? Why is 60 years not enough for us? Why is 900 years not enough for us? Because God created us to live forever. When He created Adam and Eve, were they ever supposed to die? Were their offspring supposed to die? No. Are we in Adam? Yes. What His desires were, what His abilities, what his future was, that was supposed to be our future as well, right? We were supposed to live forever. To be able to stand in the presence of God forever without nothing ever separating us. And yet we all know that sin came in and that from that point, all of his offspring were born as what? Sinners. Separated from God. And that God himself reconciled us back to him because he loves you so much. And in that reconciliation, he made some promises that this world, the way it is now, in darkness and in sin, will not always be that way. But there will come a day when he will make all things new. And that if you believe in him and you put your faith and your trust in him, you can be a part of this new world. Do you want to be a part of that? Amen. Verse 6 says, And he said to me, It is what? <coughs> you understand? This is how God sees things. God's not saying it's going to come to pass. What does he say there in Revelation? It is done. We're just waiting for that day to happen because it will happen and nothing will change that. Is that right? Because what God says, God will do because He is just and true and faithful. Can you trust Him? Amen. Amen. Okay, so, verse 6, He said to me, It is done. I am the beginning and I am the ending. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the waters of life what? Listen, if you had access to water that would allow you to live forever on this planet, would you give it away free? <laughs> Seriously. Okay? That's the difference between us and between God. And when God says, my thoughts aren't like your thoughts and my ways aren't like your ways, there's a little line in there to help you understand what he Flowing from the very throne of God is the river of life. And that you drink from that, and it gives life because God is the author of it. It comes from His throne. And yet He gives it what? Freely, with no charge. If you're thirsty, come and drink. If you're hungry, come and eat. There is no charge. It's all free. That is love, right? If that was us today, in our capitalistic society, we would say we could become rich. Okay. We would be even more richer than Bill Gates, than anybody else that you know that's rich. If you had water that gave life, but God gives it away for free. And that's one of the things we have to look forward to. Let's look a little further into this, how do we attain this water? It is given to you the answer in verse 7. What does verse 7 say? He who what? He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be what? My son. Isn't that beautiful? But what's the requirement? The requirement is that we overcome. How do we overcome? Don't get quiet now because that is the answer of the ages. How do we overcome? 
As Jesus did. As Jesus did. I like that answer. Okay. Can I overcome in this flesh? In your own strength. And I, yes. Can I overcome in my own strength? No. So how do I overcome? I overcome in Jesus. Listen. And Jesus said, this has been done. It's finished. It's done. How do I overcome? By trusting in Him. And if I believe and I trust in Him and I allow Him to rule my heart, then I am an overcomer. But I want you to read on because He gives us some words of warning right after the blessing. Okay? What does verse 8 say? But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their parts where? In the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, and this is the second death. So Jesus makes it plain that if we are to overcome, then we must be like him. Was Jesus a liar? No. Jesus was pure and holy and never sinned. And do you understand that Jesus gives us that same privilege by trusting in Him? As I told you, so that when God looks at you, who does He see? Jesus. His Son. Who never sinned. <coughs> who did everything right. Who in the Father's eyes was perfect. And so when God looks at you in Christ, you are perfect. What you did five minutes ago, what you did five years ago, doesn't matter. God says that I will put your sin and separate it so far from you, it would be like the very deepest depth of the ocean. Right? That's how far God separates your sin from you. But that's only done in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So as you come into this new year, is your relationship this last year where you wanted it to be? And if you're shaking your head no, then that means there's room for improvement, right? Has Jesus come? Did he come last year? And if he didn't come last year, that means that he didn't have a people to come back for. Is that right? But he's waiting for this bride. How do we go from who we were last year to becoming the bride of Christ this year so that he could come before the end of this year? Any ideas? Ricky? And I'll allow him to make the changes inside of us that he is wanting to make inside of us. And it all comes down to one word, and that is surrender. Right? It's easy to say, but it's really hard to live out. Because I have a will inside of me that wants to do things my way. And I love God, and I love when he helps me, but when it doesn't work out my way, then I tend to want to do it. Right? And yet God is waiting for a people who will just totally submit and trust that His way is the best way. Amen? Amen? Amen. Okay, so turn with me to Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65, we're going to look at verses 16 through 25. Isaiah 65, verse 16 through 25. Verse 16 says, So that he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he who swears in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Because the what? The former troubles are forgotten. And because they are hidden from thy eyes. Verse 17, for behold, I do what? I create. I create a new heaven and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Don't you look forward to a day when all those things that you have experienced, all those pains, all those disappointments, will be remembered no more? Listen, no matter how old you are, where you're at today, your life, <coughs> How you act, 
how you perceive your world is pretty much made up by what's happened to you in the past. Amen. Is that right? Amen. And how you feel, whether you have become bitter in your age, or whether you have become more lovely in your age, pretty much is determined by what happened to you in your past. And how you have accepted what has happened to you in your past. I can tell you, brothers and sisters, there is nothing worse in this life than dealing with old people who are bitter. But you know what I find today? There are young people, 20 year olds, who are just as bitter as a person who has lived 80 years can become bitter. That is a phenomenon that I have not an answer for. They want, but they do not have. So they do not have, and so they take. Yeah. And when they take, they're still not happy. What is the secret of not being becoming bitter the older we get? Patience. I like that. What did you say, all of that? Remember now that I creating the days of thy youth. I love that too. Listen. Become bitter or you can become better. I like that. If you know and have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you fully understand who you are in Him and understand what your future is going to be, it's pretty hard to become bitter. Does God take all of the thorns out of your path once you start to follow Him? No. Oh, Marilyn, you're shaking your head. No. And sister, I firmly agree with you. 51 years of this life, and the roughest that my life has ever been has been since I've been following Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. But it has to be that way. For me, because of who I am and what God has to do to work in me. You understand that? How many of you are stubborn? Raise your hand. Look around, keep your hands raised. Can I see my hand? Willie, are you stubborn? Very. Oh, brother, I'm right with you. If God can put Bob, are you stubborn? No. If God ever tattooed somebody, he would put stubborn right on my forehead. Bink. But God will work through our stubbornness. But how does he do that? Oh, I will. Usually it comes through pain. Okay? Now, were you one of those kids that when your parents told you, don't touch the stove because it's hot, did you listen to them? Yeah. Or did you wait for them to turn around and touch the stove? And it burned and bad. And you burned yourself. <laughs> I was that child. Okay? And so, there's no difference? Do you feel it? Right? <laughs> so do you understand why in this life we deal with pain? Amen. Because in pain we reach out. When you were a child and you burnt yourself, who were you looking for after you burnt yourself? Your mommy. Your mommy. How come they never say that? I know why. Because of that said, you're alright. We told you not to touch it. And what does your mommy do? Your mommy comes and hugs you. And puts uh, either ice on it, and as she's putting ice on it, she's she's telling you, now see, I told you, you shouldn't have done that, right? So they see God works the same way with us, in us, and through us. But pain is one of the best teachers that we have, because it's through pain that I realize I don't really want to do that again. It wasn't that painful? It's like, well, you know, I might try that again. <laughs> but God says there's going to come a time in a day when everything we know, this entire planet and this universe is going to be remade. Okay? Because the Bible tells us He doesn't just make a new earth, but what does He do? He makes a new heaven as well. Okay? Now think about this. Where did sin start? Heaven. In heaven itself, right? And so Lucifer, who became the devil, had access to every planet that God created. And during his rebellion, you think he only stayed 
at God's throne? Or do you think he tried to press that rebellion outward into God's universe? Okay? To God's universe, because that's what rebellion does. What army is content at staying in the city that they just conquered? There's no difference between the devil and how we do things either. This is why God will make a new heaven and a new earth. That every taint of sin, every place the devil has gone, will now be made in harmony. Unity. Have you thought about this? God's very throne, somewhere out in the depths of space, will be brought right here to this tiny, small planet when he makes everything new again. And that, that fountain that flows from his throne of the crystal waters of life will be here on this earth. And that we, as God's people, will be living here with God in his throne. The Bible tells us that the tabernacle of God will be with men. What's another word for tabernacle? Sanctuary. sanctuary. God's heavenly sanctuary that we spent three weeks discussing that we spent a whole quarter discussing will be here on this earth with us and it will be God himself. Isaiah 65 verse 17 for behold I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer what? The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from their life, or no more shall an infant from their live but a few days nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be, what? A curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy what? The works of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for what? For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass that before they call what? I will answer. And while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf we all know this verse, right? Uh -huh. The wolf and the lamb shall do what? <laughs> Feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall hurt, or they shall not hurt nor destroy in what? Oh. All my holy mountain, said the Lord. Turn one chapter over, chapter 66. Let's look at verses 22 and 23. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name, what? Remain. remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall what? Come shall come and worship before me, says the Lord. Can you imagine what a worship service at the throne of God is going to be like? You've experienced worship services here on this earth, and some of them have been tremendous. But think of what worship is going to be like with God there and Jesus leading out in it. Can you imagine hearing the heavenly choir? What kind of music will that be? How beautiful will that be? Can you imagine if God comes to you and asks you to have prayer for that? Can you imagine what it's going to be like if God asked you to speak that day? What's it going to be like to speak in front of the creator of the universe? To worship. We worship something we don't see. But there's going to come a day when you will see him face to face and you will worship him right in front of his presence. Amen. Joy. Harmony. Peace. 
Words are inadequate to describe what it's going to be like. In this life, we put on many facades. We hide things from each other. We come to worship and we hide things. What will it be like to be able to stand before your brothers and sisters from all over the world and have true <coughs> peace and true harmony? There will be nothing, no thoughts of what do they think about me? Do they like me? They will not just like you, but they will love you for who you are, for the difference, for the differences that you have. Okay? And we will finally know what it's like to be one. But that will only take place after I get rid of all the humanness out of me. There's no way that my humanness can conquer the that spirit of my Yes. Christ couldn't even understand it. Why me, man? Well, as an example, look at all the pain he had to go through to get there. Yes. We have to go through the same pain if we're going to be Christ's life. That's why the scriptures tell you that along that crystal river, there's the tree of life on both sides. It has 12 types of fruit that will bear each month. But what are the leaves for? The healing of the nations. Of the nations. Why do you have to be translated to be able to go to God's throne? Carnal nature has to be wiped out for one. Doc, it's what you said because that humanness we're not pure. Mm -hmm. will be done away with mm -hmm. and you will have a body that you were intended to have in the first place before the fall. Yeah. You ever thought about this? Yeah. What kind of body did Jesus have after his resurrection? Which is the body he promises us to have. When he came to the disciples the first time, did he knock on the door? Yeah. What did no, he do? He came in. He went right through the wall. Yeah. Right? He told Mary when she saw him in the garden and he she hugged him. What did he say? Touch me not. Better better translation is detain me now because I haven't ascended to my father. Do you realize that he went from where they were at in the garden to heaven and back to earth that quick? Because later on that evening, as the disciples were walking along the road of Emmaus, who did they see? Jesus. Now, how does it take us to get a man to the moon? Ten days. Okay, days. And the moon's not really far, is it? How long does it say? Did they say it would take us to go from here to Mars? Okay, it'd be over a year, right? Now think about this. Jesus was able to go from here to God's throne, where we haven't even seen with the Hubble telescope. It's so far out, and back here in a day. That's the kind of. Problem. A body that will never be touched by sin, pain, or sorrow. Again. Amen. Amen. Okay. Turn with me to Revelation 21. Now, Revelation 21, let's look at verses 1 through 7. As New Testament Christians... Revelation 21, is this the first time in Scripture that it talks about a new heaven and a new earth? The answer to that, of course, is no. What you find here is John repeating what Isaiah already repeated and gives you a little more insight and a little more depth of what God's plan is. Okay? Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had what? Passed, passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a what? Bride. A bride, adorned for her husband. How beautiful is that? And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the what? Another word for tabernacle is what? Behold, the sanctuary of God is with who? Yeah. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more what? No more death. No more sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more what? For the former things 
hath passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the waters of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit what?